Here we are today at the Queen's Museum of Art for the opening of photographer Corky Lee's exhibit. For four decades, he has been photographing the Asian American experience. His photography has documented the history of the Asian Americans and captured everything from festivals to protests. I have here someone who's also working on documenting history. Her name is Felicia Lin, a fellow Taiwanese American who is working on writing the memoir of Su Bang. She's been working on documenting his life for nearly seven years now. Hi, Felicia. So for people who don't know who Su Bang is or anything about him, what would you like to tell them about him? Hi, everybody. Um, Su Bang is a 92-year-old revolutionary from Taiwan. He is an activist and a historian. He actually wrote this book called The Foreign Genius of Taiwan's History, and that is probably his most important contribution to Taiwan. Um, during World War II, he actually spent seven years in China working for the Chinese Communists. And the reason why he was doing that was to resist the Japanese, because the Japanese had these imperialist ambitions to take over Asia. And at the end of World War II, he finally escaped from the Communists because he realized how hypocritical and corrupt they were back to Taiwan. At the same time, the Chinese nationalists were kicked out of uh, China and that, with Chiang Kai-shek, and they went to Taiwan. Um, Chiang Kai-shek was a very oppressive dictator, so Su Bing actually plotted to assassinate him. And when it was discovered that he was plotting to do this, he had to escape from Taiwan and ended up in Japan. Um, later on, he was in Japan for about 40 years, at which time he wrote this book called The Foreign Years of Taiwan's History. Now that book is actually considered the Bible or encyclopedia of Taiwan's history because it was the first one of its kind um, written about Taiwan's history and a lot of people still reference it today. Um, and so that I think is one of his hugest accomplishments and contributions to the Taiwanese, uh, Taiwan independence movement. Great. What is it about his life story that really resonates with you? Well, I think the thing that's really compelling about Su Bing's story is that he's the, pers he's the kind of person that's always just thought that he himself as an individual could really make a change and make an impact, make a difference. For example, when he went to China to work undercover for the Chinese Communists, he thought that he could make a difference in the movement to resist the Japanese who were trying to basically take over Asia during World War II. And later when he uh, went back to Taiwan at the end of World War II and Chiang Kai-shek and the Kuomintang ended up in Taiwan, he saw that they were an oppressive dictatorial regime. So he started this plot to assassinate Chiang Kai-shek. Uh, and then after that he had to flee from Taiwan to Japan because it was discovered that he was involved with this plot. And finally when he ended up in Japan and he wrote Taiwan's 400 Years of History, which I believe is going to be his longest lasting contribution. So the message I think is to anybody out there, young, old, whatever shape, size or color you are, if you're wondering if you can make a difference or you can make an impact, I would say yes, his story is one of inspiration. It's one that you can follow to believe that you as one person can make a difference, however it is that you want to do it. Excellent. Why have you decided to take this on and to tell his story? Well, the way that I actually learned about Su Bing was when I was living in Taiwan, I read an article that was translated into English that was written by him. And when I found out the background behind his personal story, I was really curious. And so I initially approached him asking if I could write, interview him and write something based on his life. And as I got to know him, I realized that he is actually a living piece of history and that his life is uh, something that's worth documenting and another way for people to understand the story of Taiwan. So how did you get involved with this project? And did Su Bang personally commission you to write his biography memoir? Um, as I said, I heard about Su Bing because I had read an article that I wrote that was translated into English and I just approached and after our initial meeting we actually met very regularly for about four years and at this point it's been seven years since I've returned to New York we've continued to communicate by phone and Skype so it's really a personal project that I saw the need to tell this person's story a very inspiring um, story.
And so I actually think that it's my privilege to have this opportunity to tell the story and that he has been very generous with his time and his cooperation in this project. So it's truly a collaboration and I really feel sometimes that I should be paying him for all the time and effort that he spent um, on this project with me. So I hear that Sue Bang is actually going to be arriving in the U.S. for a visit in the next few days. Tell me about that. It's actually really exciting because this is the first time that he's visited the U.S. in nearly 20 years. I think the last time that he visited was in about 1992. So he's actually going to be arriving in a few days on June 27th. He'll be arriving in Los Angeles, uh, heading over to San Diego, Michigan, Detroit, um, also, he'll be in Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., Houston, and back in San Francisco and Los Angeles at the end of his trip. Uh, he will actually be in New York from July 17th to 23rd, and of course, I'm going to be planning an appearance for him, so I want you to stay tuned for that. If you want to know more information about his visit, um, across the U.S. and also about his date of appearance in New York, please visit my website, which is www.aboutsubing.blogspot.com. Great, Felicia. We're looking forward to learning more about Sue Bang's appearance in New York and about his travels across the country. Thank you for doing this interview. Goodbye.